I am joined on stage by my daughter, Jenna. Um, <laughs> um, Stacy and I have a blended family of five, and Jenna is the youngest. She's the only girl. Look, Stacy's already preparing her with tissues. I'm gonna I cry need some every too, Sunday. Probably. Um, but she's the youngest of our five kids. She's the only girl. She lives with us. She moved in with us just under two years ago, uh, August of 2021. Jenna moved from Orlando to Jupiter and moved in with us. And uh, in all honesty, we have absolutely loved it, loved it. It has been a absolute gift from God to me specifically. Uh, for Jenna to be spending this time of her life living under our roof. It is pure joy. Um, and so about, I don't know, it was maybe a month and a half ago, uh, I was thinking through the summer schedule, and I had guest speakers for every Sunday in July except for July 23rd. Uh, and so I thought, okay, well, I mean, I can do something. I really don't want to preach. I'm trying to try to take at least July off from preparing and preaching sermons uh, so I can be fresh for the fall. Uh, but I was thinking through the schedule, and I said, I have an idea. It came to me while we were sitting in a staff meeting. And I thought, I'm going to see if Jenna would be willing to sit on stage with me and just have a conversation. So I went home, and I asked her, and she said, let me think about it. And about a day later, she said, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, and so I said, don't worry about it. Totally fine. No pressure at all. About three weeks later, maybe, yeah, about three weeks later, uh, I woke up one morning and I picked up my phone and there was a text waiting for me from her that she sent to me at about two o'clock in the morning from across the house. She was awake. I didn't get the text till early the next morning. And she said, dad, I can't sleep. And I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm talking to God. And I really, I really feel like I need to do that thing with you on the 23rd. <laughs> so I woke up the next morning, of course, and uh, when she got up, when she came out of her room, I said, "Are you you serious? You want to do this?" And she said, "I really feel like this is what God wants me to do." Um, so here she is. She's been a little nervous, but I told her uh, that I'm much more uh, weary of people who take the stage who aren't nervous at all, or who think that they're qualified, or who are overly confident, because I said to Jenna, when we are weak, God shows us how strong he is. Um, and so she woke up this morning, and I said, how do you feel? She said, I, I feel good. I have to keep reminding myself that it's not about me. And I'm like, I know, that's a hard thing to do when you take the stage, uh, and everybody's looking at you. Um, so we discussed a little bit about whether or not we would plan this conversation, sort of outline what we wanted to talk about, or if we wanted it to just sort of develop organically. And we both decided that we just sort of wanted it to develop organically. So um, let me begin uh, by just saying that, and most of you know this, um, my life and my family's life dramatically changed in the summer of 2015. Uh, Jenna's mom and I uh, got divorced. Uh, our family unit, the way that it had been for so long, was now fractured. Uh, my two boys, Gabe and Nate, were already out of the house. Um, Gabe, I mean, Gabe was out of the house, married with a child. Nate was on his way to college. Uh, but Jenna was going to be at home, so she was going to have to live in the throes of the consequences um, of that divorce. And, um, and I don't think, based on our conversations, and let me just say this, that the conversations that we have um, in our home on an almost daily basis are some of the richest conversations I've ever had in my life. I, I know that I'm a very proud and very, very biased father, but this is a remarkably mature, uh, incredibly self-aware 21-year-old young woman. Um, and so, uh, so we've talked a little bit about what that season was like. And I mentioned it to her the other day, and she said, it's kind of a blur to me. Like that whole time was such a blur to me. She was heading into high school. 
Um, made it through high school, graduated in 2020, spring of 2020, and then went off to Orlando, not to go to college, but just to go move in with a couple friends and, and work and just sort of, you know, get a feel for what life on her own was going to look like. And that year in Orlando, following everything that happened with mom and me and your high school years, uh, I think you would admit was probably the roughest year of your life. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Good answer. Correct. Okay. Um, why? Uh, I mean, okay. Um, well, we talked about this this morning a little bit and how it all happened. Um, so starting back in high school when I was with, when you guys, when you and mom got divorced, it was like after you guys, after everything kind of blew up, I didn't know really where to, I felt safe in our home and I didn't anymore. And I didn't know where to turn to. So I kind of put my safety and my hope in my friends. That was my, that was my home. That was my like safety, it was just my friend group. So I would just spend all day and every day with them. And they're amazing and I love them so much. And so then when I, that was all throughout high school, and that was my identity. My identity was in who I was with my friends, who I was in my friend group. And um, after we graduated high school and everyone kind of spread out and dispersed, I moved to Orlando, like you said, and didn't really have any direction of where I wanted to go, didn't really have any plans. I know I didn't want to go to college because I hate school. And that's not for me. And so I was like, I'm just gonna go and I'll work and I'll like hopefully just kind of take it as it comes. And so I moved to Orlando with two of my friends who were going to UCF at the time and not really putting any much thought into what was gonna happen. But I moved there and I had realized it's very like the hard way that I didn't know who I was at all apart from my friends and apart from who, and apart from Fort Lauderdale where my home was. And I had no clue who I was apart from everything that I knew. So that was a, that was a rough time figuring that out and kind of falling on my face and learning it the hard way. Yesterday, uh, I listened to a host of voicemails that Jenna left me at different times when she was living in Orlando. Uh, she would call and leave long. She was really going through a, 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 a dark night of the soul, a season of real bona fide depression. Um, I got her set up with a counselor up there, um, but she would leave me these messages sometimes in the middle of the night and I wouldn't get them till the next morning. And she was just weeping and saying that she was sad and she didn't know why and she felt hopeless and she didn't know why. And you can imagine me as her dad waking up in the morning, seeing a voicemail waiting for me from Jenna in the middle of the night and listening to it and just feeling sick to my stomach so many times. I wanted to just drive to Orlando and say, pack your bag, leave all your furniture, pack your bags, you're, you're coming with me. Um, and, uh, and then she came home yesterday after I listened to these messages, Stacy and I listened to them, and I said, I think you should listen to a couple of these. And she's like, no, I don't, I don't wanna listen to the, that at all. And I said, I, I think it would be encouraging to you, actually, to see where you were and where God has brought you. Um, and you did, I think it would be good um, to kind of explain a little bit about how you felt when you were up there. Uh, what does depression, hopelessness, a sense of lostness feel like or what it felt like for you when you were there? Um, and then we'll get to kind of where you are now. Okay. Um, yeah, so I moved up there and I don't even know how to like begin. Um, I just felt very, what Stacy? Distracted. Uh, 
Tracy has cue cards just in case we draw one. <laughs> um, yeah, I went up there and I was very lonely, super lonely, even though I was living with two of my best friends. It was like I couldn't express to them how I felt at all. And when I tried, they had no clue how to respond. And they had no clue what it felt like to feel how I felt. And they had, like I would say, I'm just so lonely. I'm just so, I feel, I feel so hopeless. I feel like I have no direction. Like, wh like, what am I doing with my life? Who am I? And they were like, Jenna, it's all right. Like, we're just, we're just having fun. We have our own apartment. Like, what's there to be sad about? Like, come on, like, just cheer up. And I was like, no, that's not it. It has nothing to do with circumstances. Like, I could feel this way and I'd be living at home. I could feel this way and I'd be living with my other best friends. Like, the circumstance had nothing to do with it. It was all, like, inner turmoil and me dealing with everything that had happened before and finally it all catching up to me. And it all blew up and I had to deal with, okay, who am I? Who am, who am I apart from... Like, am, am, do I believe in God? I grew up my entire life going to church. Is that something real? Is that something, like, what does that really look like? What is, who am I apart from what I've always been, like, told that I am? But, yeah, it was, it was very lonely because I felt like no one could understand and no one could have an honest conversation about it, especially with people my age. No one, like, knew how to really talk about things honestly and, like, in, like, a raw way and just sit down and have a serious conversation. So that made me feel super lonely, super lonely. There's a quote that you said one time, and it was like, loneliness, something about loneliness and about how it's not being understood, it has nothing to do with being alone, but has everything to yeah. do with not being understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something yes, like that? Yeah, I don't know who said it, but I'm gonna you know go ahead quote? and take credit for it, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. It was that's it, quote. yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. It's loneliness. Yeah, it's like, I, I could be in a room full of people. Right but not be understood and feel super lonely. Like it has nothing to do with the amount of people I'm around. So that was really like the core of it. No one, I, I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know who, who could understand this, who knows what I'm going through. And that was just, it was so confusing for me. It was so confusing to just, cause I was like, what am I, what's going on with me? I've never felt this way in my life. I've never felt like off track. I've never felt uncomfortable. I'm, I've always been secure in who I am. I've always been, like secure, like I could walk in, in high school, I could walk into a room and I knew 90% of the people in the room. And they'd be like, Jenna, oh my gosh. And like, I felt comfortable and I felt known. And then I moved to Orlando and I only know two people. And it was like, I was in this like, I don't know, a place that I had never known and feeling a weight I had never felt before. And it was scary, it was very scary. So you mentioned that you grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. You grew up hearing about God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your mom and I were very, I think, particular and intentional about ensuring that our kids knew who God was. And, um, and of course, you grew up as a pastor's daughter, mm -hmm. so you were in church all the time. Um, and recently, maybe a week or so ago, two weeks ago, uh, you were at mom's place and you went through a box in her garage, mm -hmm. I think, and found an old journal from when you were seven years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, a journal of prayers and things, uh, you know, just basically conversations with God. Mm -hmm. uh, what was, there were two common refrains in every single journal entry. The first one was, please help Gabe to be nice to me. Okay, that was the just first my one. my oldest brother. Um, the second one was, help me not to sin and disobey. It was, um, like, it was like a little like prompts, and it was like, I'm sorry for, thank you for. Right, right, right. Like, I'm sorry for sinning and not obeying and it what was sweet to me in reading through those was that it gave evidence to the fact that even way back then mm -hmm. you had some uh you had a relationship with god mm -hmm. to some degree um and then uh you you know everything happens uh w with mom and me and uh like you said you sort of transferred your sense of security and safety from your home to your friend group mm -hmm. and then once that friend group scattered uh you felt lost mm -hmm. alone uh and perhaps for the very first time had to deal with not only god on your own mm -hmm. but had to deal with everything that happened four or five years earlier, which you hadn't dealt with, really. Mm -hmm. um, so your relationship with God became 
yours. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that was just passed down. Yeah. I think a lot of people sometimes wonder, well, well, of course you believe in God. You grew yeah. up in a you grew up in an environment where God was always talked about. It yeah. was your upbringing. But in the last, I yeah, would say, year like, and a half, yeah. it's become yours. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'd gone I'd gone to Christian private schools my entire life. Grew up going to church every single Sunday. Would go to youth group. Go to Sunday school. Would go to I went to a like a Christian sleepaway camp every summer. Like it was like very. It was I was surrounded by it. But it was like, and that was all I knew. And so that, again, like you said, like that's the most, everyone's like, well, yeah, of course you're a Christian. Like, <laughs> of course you believe in God. That's all you know. But um, yeah, it wasn't until I like needed it. Like it wasn't until I was like, okay, is this real? Is this till it became like my own? Till I was like, okay, like what is that all about? Like what is, it, what is that? It became super real to me. And like I had seen it in a whole different way when I was feeling that way in Orlando and I was just like hopeless and like I felt so alone. And that's when he reminded me like, you're not alone. So it was there feeling at your lowest that God became real to you in a brand new way. And you and I were talking this morning about how uh, illustrative it is that God formed man out of dirt. the dirt <laughs> of the ground, uh -huh. um, like Genesis says. And what's so revealing to me about that is that God always works in the dirty places. He does his best work in the hard places. That when we think we are making it, when we're strong, when we feel self-sufficient and super confident, we're less aware of how dependent we are on God. But when we are, when we are at the end of our rope and we're feeling lost and lonely uh, and uh, hopeless, that's typically when God shows up. Yeah, well, and it, was, shows it was everything that I had ever heard my entire life. God is always with you. God will never leave you. Like everything I had always heard, but it didn't like, I had never really understood it, and I never really felt it until I needed it. I remember I was talking to you when I was reading that Max Licato book, and it was like becoming so real to me. And I was like, it's like a song that I've known my entire life, but I finally understand the lyrics. Like, so was there? Was there? <laughs> <laughs> Can you think of a moment? for instance, when you were in Orlando, because you're, I went through something very similar to you. Circumstances, of course, were different, but a few years, as you know, before you went through that dark night of the soul, I went through my own, and I didn't realize until I lost the life that I had how much of my identity was anchored in the people that I knew, the work that I did, the family unit that I led, all those sorts of things. And so when all of that became fractured and scattered, I, I went through a midlife identity crisis, not knowing as a 42-year-old man who I was. Um, and it was during that season for me, like it was for you in Orlando, that um, I was sort of stripped bare uh, and realized that my, my identity, my worth, my value, my security and significance, my safety is not anchored in anything that I do or anybody that I know or any circumstance that I'm in or any work that I accomplish, but it is ultimately anchored in God's love for me. Mm -hmm. um, was there a specific uh, moment that you can remember or moments that you can remember where everything you just said a minute ago became real? You're driving in your car, you're feeling lost, you're feeling low, something, and it was just kind of like God made himself so real to you in a moment when you needed to be reminded that he was real. I can't remember like a specific moment where I felt that way. It was just kind of like gradual mm -hmm. over time. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Like some of the voicemails we listened to yeah. yesterday. Uh, one, you were in your apartment. Yeah. It was in the middle of the day. Uh -huh. One, you were driving 
home from work. Yeah, I remember that one, um, leaving that one. And you were just, I mean, almost, uh, it was almost hard to understand what you were saying because you were crying so hard uh -huh. while you were driving. Um, and it just, you know, it, it makes sense that God's goodness would be revealed to us, God's care and goodness and love and mercy would be revealed to us when we are at our lowest, when we're at our worst, when we're feeling uh, the most lonely and lost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like you felt that way the entire time you lived there. I mean, when you first got there, Stacy and I got you settled and got you moved in. Yeah, it was new and it was exciting. I was yeah. like, all right, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Like this new journey. Yeah, and then about a month in. A month in, I was like, I wanna leave yeah. now. Right. So why didn't you? Because you, I remember you telling me, you were like, just stick it out. Like, just, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know, like, how God will work through it. Just, like, stick it out. Be there for at least six more months or at least this time. And I was like, I really don't want to. I really don't want to. And I was mad at you, actually. I was mad because I was like, why are you making me stay here? I don't want to. It's just torture. Um, but then it made, but then, like, we were talking about it yesterday. And I was like, I can't just get the habit of just escaping whenever it feels bad, just like escaping the feeling of it feeling bad. How am I ever gonna deal with the bad feelings if I'm just escaping everything? Like if I just leave right when I get up there when I feel bad, like what, what is that? That yeah. doesn't gonna, that's not gonna help me in any way. It's just gonna and, numb the pain and numb that and it's just gonna keep on. And it got worse. And it got worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 As time like my up. time up there? Yeah, your time up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it got consistently darker for you. Yeah. I had times, like days, yeah. like I left you that other voicemail, and I was like, hey, Dad, I'm doing great. Yeah. Like I had days where I was like in a good mood, and I was like, all right, I feel some pep in my step, but like for the most part, it was, it was, the, it was the darkest time mm -hmm. of my life. Okay, so then um, like spring of uh, 2021, uh, you're you're feeling really low. Okay, you've uh -huh. now been in Orlando at that time for eight months, yeah. I guess probably. Um, you've gone through a lot while you're up there internally, not so much externally. You know, the circumstances around you were fairly stable, but internally you were just being deconstructed, mm -hmm. and God was showing up, and you were you know kind of getting a sense of who you were. Um, but you were very low, and we were on the phone one day. And I said, I want you to consider, I mean, we talked all the time, but mm -hmm. I said, I want you to consider the possibility of maybe moving to Jupiter. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time you were of course open to it. Mm -hmm. um, so Stacy and I talked about it and uh, you moved in with us in August after your lease was up in mm -hmm. Orlando, you moved in with us August, August 2021. 2021, yeah. And the last two years mm -hmm. have been completely different. Yeah, I'm a completely different person. Okay, so completely talk a little different. bit about that. You get here, and at first you're like, I'm not, I'm scared. Yeah, at first I hated it. Yeah. At first I wanted to move back to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. I wanted to escape back to where I felt familiar. Yeah. Familiarity is mm -hmm. just what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And nothing felt familiar at all. Right. I didn't feel familiar. Yeah. Like where I was, I didn't feel familiar. I didn't know anyone in Jupiter at all. Mm -hmm. Um. So I just, yeah, I wanted to escape and go back to Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. But then I remember that thing, like, I can't just escape when I feel uncomfortable. What's, what good is that going to do? Mm -hmm. So then I stuck it out. And, and so... And I got a job, and I, was, I stayed busy. Where would you get a job? I was a nanny for two different families. Mm -hmm. I was a nanny in the morning for this little baby, Michael, that I love so much. <laughs> and then I would pick up this little four-year-old boy named Teddy, and I'd spend all day with him. And then Many I, of you may know Teddy. He, he's yes. usually dressed in some costume that doesn't match. He's the son of my good friend <laughs> Randall. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was also working at a restaurant, serving restaurant? at a restaurant, Old Florida Bar and Grill. <laughs> do you work there still? No. Where do you work now? Aqua Grill. Yeah. Shout and out. If, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> if you want a good place to eat, so come to Aqua Grill. <laughs> go to Aqua Grill and please. For my sake and, and hers, leave her a very large tip. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so you, yeah, you got, you started working right away. Yeah, so um, kept keeping busy was really good for me. Yeah, keeping busy kind of kept my mind off of, oh, I feel so uncomfortable and I don't mm -hmm. know who I am. How? Okay, so at what point did it go from I'm uncomfortable here because it's new and unfamiliar mm -hmm. to this feels like home? 
Yeah, I was. I mean, I was learning myself. I was learning what I like apart from everything that all my what well, like. What do I like apart from what my friends like, or like what do I like because or like what do I. What kind of music do I like to listen to? How, how do I like, what kind of conversations do I like to have? Who am I drawn to? Not just because my friends are, but that was the whole, that was the hard thing too in Orlando. Cause I was like, all right, who am I apart from my friends and apart from just what everyone else is saying? So that's kind of what I was learning. And then I started to feel like really comfortable in my own skin because I was starting to like, like, okay, I know what I like. Like, I kind of know what kind of music I like. I know what I like to do when I have free time. I know, like, I like to read now, which is weird. I've always hated reading. <laughs> and now I do it for fun. And are you reading something now? Yes. What are you reading now? Um, it's called Where the Light Fell by Philip Yancey. It's his... It's his memoir, yeah. and it's incredible. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, so you started feeling more started comfortable. Started feeling more comfortable in my own skin. I'm like, okay, like kind of confident, like, all right, like I'm, I'm fine alone. I can be fine alone. Yeah. And that's where, and that's when I, I really started just kind of like relying on God, mm. like really started leaning on him, like, and just like really, and it became real to me. Mm. And it was like, it was like in moments when I was with, with Michael were like sweet moments mm -hmm. with me and God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, so God, your relationship with God is sort of, you know, it was at that time becoming more and yeah, it more was real. More it real. was developing. You were starting to feel more comfortable. Um, uh, as time has gone on, I guess one question I would have is how much, in your opinion, do you think uh, sort of surroundings played? Into yeah, that, for you. that was a huge reason I wanted to move here too. When mm -hmm. you said it, I was like, yeah, I'm going there mm -hmm. because I was like, I just, I want to be just surrounded by people that are going to just like, like pour into me. Like mm -hmm. people that are just going to like, I can talk to and they know what to say. And they, I want to go to church every Sunday mm -hmm. because I want to be surrounded by God. Even if I don't feel it right now, I know that's what I need. Like I always knew mm -hmm. like where to go back to. Mm -hmm. I always knew it's in, in Orlando too. I always knew like, okay. Like he was like the anchor. Mm -hmm. Like I know I can do whatever I want and want, but I know he's there. He's still where he says he was. Mm -hmm. Like he's still there. So that was always like a thing to fall back on. So uh, I mean, because you know we've talked about this. There's it's sort of a any time real change needs to happen, and any time real change does happen in our lives, it's sort of a combination of internal work and external circumstances or external surroundings. So it's almost like you had to be, you had to be in surroundings that gave you the freedom and the space to begin sort of going deep. Like the, the yeah. internal work couldn't be done if life was insecure and chaotic on the outside. Yeah, I had to be somewhere where I felt safe. Where you felt safe. And I felt safe living with you guys and mm -hmm. I felt safe going to church. Mm -hmm. So I could like really just start paying attention to what I was feeling and why I was feeling that way. And so that. two years in, okay, you're two years in, almost two years in, mm -hmm. um, describe sort of the difference. I mean, you already have to some degree, but sort of describe the difference between Jenna on July 23rd, 2023 and Jenna, let's say on July 23rd, 2020. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like night and day, mm. like night and day. I would be super annoyed with Jenna from 2020 <laughs> if she was talking to me. Yeah. Um, Why? She just didn't know anything. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. She was, she was a completely different person. Her, what she liked was different. What she thought was fun was different. Mm. What she valued was different. Mm. What she was attracted to was different. So it's, yeah, I'm totally... Like, I, I remember, I remember when I first moved here, and it was like a Friday night, and I was just laying in bed, and I'm like, oh, a year ago, I would be out at some bar with my friends, and it'd be so much fun, mm -hmm. and now I feel so boring, and I feel like I had, like, major FOMO, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, like, this is just so lame, like, what am I doing, like, but now I'm like, I'll, I, I wouldn't be anywhere. I would rather be in my bed than anywhere else on Friday night. <laughs> like, right. like I'd rather be in my bed watching a movie, like all comfortable than anywhere else on a Friday night. So it's just like those little changes. Even like the music I like is totally different. Mm. Like, um, yeah, like I said before, now I read for fun. Mm. Before you couldn't pay me to read a book. <laughs> right. 
So it's just like little things like that. I, when I remember thinking when I first, because be, I became a Christian at 21. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking when I first became a Christian. I mean, I was a wild man, wild man. Uh, and then God sort of rescued me from all of that. And uh, he didn't rescue me from my wildness that is still in full play. Uh, <laughs> maybe even more so now than ever before. But um, it's kind of like he doesn't, he doesn't take away your excitement. He just changes what it is you get excited yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that he doesn't, you know, it's not like he's uh, robbing you of the thrill of life. He's just changing what it is you get thrilled about yeah. in life. Now, um, yeah, like now I find fun in little things. Like me and my friends went to go see Back to the Future in the theaters, and I was like, this is so fun. <laughs> but before, I was like, ah. Um... Okay, so uh, one thing we have a lot in common. This is she is a, a, a twenty-one-year-old female version of me, um, and uh, one of the things, one of the many things that we have in common. Well, not one. Let's say some of the things we have in common. We both are addicted to music. Mm -hmm. We both love movies. Mm -hmm. We love ideas and books mm -hmm. and things like that. So uh, I think it would be both fun and crucially important for you to be able to identify off the top of your head, um, sort of uh, t talk about music for a minute in terms of give me five musical artists that oh. you like. It doesn't have to be in order like these are my top five, just five that you like. Okay, that's it's, such a loaded question. But it starts with... Bieber. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bieber not because of the music, but it's just like I've, like I love him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've, you, but you've loved him your whole life. I've loved him my entire life. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's like I'm, I feel loyal to him. Right, right. It's like a loyalty. Okay, now that that obligation <laughs> is out of the way. That's like, yeah, exactly. Okay. Besides him, yeah. music that I actually love to listen to. Yeah. Lately, it's been very different. Yeah. Um, but that was like one of the things, like I was learning, okay, none of my friends know who these artists are, but I love them. Mm -hmm. And like, they would call me weird if I was like, you know who this is, but like, I like it. So that was one of the things that was like me kind of finding out who I am. Um, I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love Radiohead. Yeah. I love, uh, the Smiths. Hmm. I love the cure. <laughs> I love... Alanis Morissette, huge. Um, You're going to Austin City Limits. I am in October. Just and I'm going to see be there. Alanis Morissette. I'm going to be there front row, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> yeah, I love concerts. That's all I spend my money on. <laughs> um, oh man, I could go down my entire Spotify and just like list names for hours. I, I mean, we we love music. We love talking about music. I love the fact that she loves some of the same music I love. 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, movies. Oh my gosh. Just off the top of your head. <sighs> a few. A few that you that you love. I don't even know how to answer that. Yes, you do. <laughs> Name one movie that you like. What have you watched recently that you liked? Recently? Yeah. Well, Silver Linings Playbook was really good. Mm-hmm. That was just yeah. like a that was like a personal one. Mm -hmm. um, um, Goodwill Hunting was amazing. Yeah, I told yeah. her <laughs> forever. I was like, watch Goodwill yeah, Hunting. Yeah, Goodwill Hunting was so She's like, good. Really? She'll ask me for movie recommendations, and then I like, give them to her, and then she waits like six months to actually watch the recommendations that I gave her. But I just watched Pride and Prejudice like two days ago. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You would have a good. You would have a better, like recollection of movies that I like <laughs> of the movies that you like yeah for me it's just like a big blur like there's a thousand that come to mind yeah uh when we were Jenna came and joined us on vacation for a couple days we watched we Dune. watched Dune was the really good Dune, which I wasn't really into watching but uh I'm I a loved huge it. Timothy Chalamet fan yes Jenna loves Timothy <laughs> Chalamet <laughs> I'm glad one person in the room even knows who that is you guys are pop, pop culture idiots I mean you really need to sort of get on board here um uh, what are some good like thinker movies though that we like? Some good um, like Interstellar. Interstellar was a classic one. I, 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 I Collateral Beauty. Yeah, that was a that was a powerful one. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Interstellar was a movie. If you've never seen it, it's it's a Christopher Nolan. It's an, it's amazing. It's it's amazing. But I could only watch it one time, and I can't tell you why. I'll just tell you that it, it's incredibly painful to watch that movie for me. Uh, if you're a parent and you ever watch that movie, you will understand what I mean. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other movies that you and I have talked about, enjoyed. We um, Good Will Hunting was, I was so glad yeah, that you finally one. watched it. Dead Poet Society was a recent one that I yeah, loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what? <laughs> we haven't seen that. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard about that one. Yeah, though. yeah. I've heard about that one. Um, okay, so uh, how would you describe... Uh, your life now? Um, hmm. How would you describe yourself now? That's a better question. Um, oh, man. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just completely different in ways. I don't know. Like the conversations I like to have. I like to talk about like real stuff. Like give me That's like what, what do you mean you talk like talk about real stuff? Like like what, like how like how are people feeling? Mm -hmm. What have people have gone through? What have not like oh like I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like stupid conversations are fun too. I love having stupid conversations. <laughs> but but just sort of that you you feel like uh, like I feel most myself talking about real stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. I have I have a blast alone, like mm -hmm. doing stuff alone, which, which I never you could you would have never dreamed of two never, years ago. Yeah, which I could have never done a couple yeah. years ago. And now I love it. Going to the movies alone. Going to the beach alone. Mm -hmm. I go to a coffee shop alone for so long and like. Yeah, that's I love doing that. I find the joy in like smaller things now. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, just like little things. How would you say that God recently has been sort of showing himself to you? Mm -hmm. Like what are that's you where question. are you seeing him? Um oh, that's a good question. He just keeps on just like reminding me like just like no matter how far I wander, like no matter how far like I want to go, when I want to wander, because I want to wander a lot of the time, um, that he's just always there. He's just always waiting, and he's just been the same. Like he's always hmm. had the same. He's like I'm just like it's like so loving. Like it just feels it's like sweet. Hmm. It's very sweet, hmm. and it's very safe with him. And I'm just reminded every time I go back to that, I'm like, okay, yeah, like, why was I even trying to wander in the first place? Mm -hmm. Like, where was I even going to go? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's become more, it's a very, it's a personal, it's become real because it's, it's a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's what's become real to me. Like, people have said that my entire life. Oh, you have a personal relationship with Jesus, personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And I never really understood it until I had one. Mm -hmm. So it's like literally just me and him. Mm -hmm. And I, So, yeah. um... How would you, how would you describe personal, intimate? How would you describe the way you feel about him? Uh, I mean, I mean, I love him so much. Mm -hmm. I was listening to we were listening to old Switchfoot songs last night, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was just reminded me like, I don't know, like he's it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I love nature for the reason that mm -hmm. it's just like, it just shows me who he is. And like looking up at the stars is like my favorite thing ever because I just see him. Mm -hmm. like that's all I see. And sunsets and sunrises and the beach. I am over the moon proud of you. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, you, you could be a complete train wreck and I wouldn't be any less proud. So don't hear me say that. But um, I mean, you the way God is developing you into the young woman that you are is you just have to wait till you become a parent, but it is like, you say that all the time. It's, it's, it's everything you could, <laughs> it's literally everything a parent hopes for mm -hmm. everything. Uh, and I mean, it was when, when mom and I got divorced and I moved out, and moved to, I moved to Orlando. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Orlando's like the catch-all for people who are yeah. jacked up. Apparently, Orlando but, sucks. Uh, yeah, I, I, hate, I hate Orlando. <laughs> Orlando does suck. Screw Orlando. Screw Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, and I moved to Orlando. That was the first time since you were born 
yeah, that I was wasn't weird. waking up in the same house as you. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was a daily grind. Um, and then uh, a year later, a little over a year later, uh, I moved to Texas and I was gone for a year there, which was my Orlando year. The, or the year you had in Orlando was my year in Texas where God's just deconstructing me and sort of exposing all of the things that are smaller than him that I was putting my hope in, putting my identity in. And when all of that stuff was gone, God showed up. Uh, but it was very, very painful. Um, and then Stacy and I moved to Fort Myers. That put us closer. Mm-hmm. You know, now we're, I don't know, hour and 45 minutes, two hours away from where you were. Um, but it wasn't until you moved in with us that I just, I can remember almost daily for that first couple months, just thanking God for such a gift. It was like you, regardless of how you were when you arrived, uh, just having you in the home, mm-hmm. seeing you. I, I, you know, we have great intentional conversations, but it's the small stuff. It's the walking into the kitchen to make breakfast and you're in the kitchen, you know, doing something and we're just talking about silly stuff or just small talk or whatever. Um, I mean, that has been such an incredible gift. I told her, I said, you're, you can uh, live with us until you get married, which hopefully won't be until you're, you know, very old. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Talk about that for a second. Let me, but so you... When somebody asks, what do you want to do when you grow up? Your answer um, has almost always been... Be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> be, be a wife and a mom. Be a wife, be and, a a wife mom. and a mom. That's well, the most important thing. Because you love your kids. Yes, I love kids. That's my... Yeah. I, like, I don't want... Like, I don't see myself, like... I don't know. Doing it... You know, like, having a career. That's just not... <laughs> and being a, <laughs> being a mom is no... Is yeah, no like that's that's job. a full-time job, and yeah. I can't wait. I freaking can't wait to be a mom. <laughs> yeah, I pray um, for my kids all the time. So uh, so that, I mean, just the fact that you are uh, here with us and Stacy and I have had a front row seat to watch where you were mm-hmm. and where you are now. I, I was talking to Stacy the other day, and we were talking about the new house that we're moving in and moving out and what we're going to miss about the house that we're in. And I was like, I feel like I'm like, I've grown so much in this house. I'm like this is, I've changed so much in my, in that bedroom right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. 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 Like that, so much has happened in this yeah. little house. Stacy and I, when we moved here in uh, April, May of 2019, we rented a, a little villa, a uh, tiny little place. And we thought Let, we'll rent for a year until we can get a lay of the land and then we'll, we'll get something. And then the, after our year was up, COVID hit, so we signed up for another year because we didn't know what was going to happen. And then after that year was up, the housing market went through the roof. So we're like, hey, we can't afford to buy anything. Um, So we've just been waiting, 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 saving, saving, a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. Uh, And we we just bought a townhouse in Abacoa, and we cannot wait. It's a place of our own, the first place of our own since we've been married. uh, we're, so we're super, we're totally broke uh, now, but we're excited, uh, that we finally, we finally own money. a place. No. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's bigger. We couldn't have any of you guys over to our current place because it's just too small. Uh, but this place is a little bit bigger, so we'll be able to host more things and have more of you in our home, thankfully, after four years. Uh, but that little place was a place of redemption for me too. Yeah place of healing for me oh massive place of healing for me too so i was thinking about that this morning also just like you know I, this is god has been really really sweet to us in this place and mm-hmm. i'm gonna leave with so many really sweet fond memories of what mm-hmm. he did um and you've lived with us for half the time we've been there mm-hmm. uh and yeah back to that when you were saying it was like now i'm living with you in this period of my life mm-hmm. Like it's important that I'm here in this stage of my life. Like you're like like we've talked about before how it would be totally different if I moved in with you when I was in high school. I was a completely different person. And it's like you said how um, the teacher appears when the student is ready. Yeah. That's so that's good. Yeah. that's how it was when yeah. I moved in with you. Mm-hmm. It's like God knew what He was doing. Preparing you. Preparing me to ready. live with you at this time in my life. Mm-hmm. And I remember when Stacy and I were talking about you moving in with us. 
um, you know, I just, I said, I, I feel so strongly, and I believe it's from God, but I feel so strongly that, um, that we have an opportunity to really, I mean, obviously being used by God, God's the one who ultimately does it, but we have an opportunity, Stacy and I were talking about, um, really sort of redirecting the course of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, that if you had, let's say, moved into some apartment in Fort Lauderdale with your with your old buddies or whatever, I mean, you wouldn't be where you are today mm -hmm. if you had, um, you know, you it was a hard decision for you. I know you believed it was the right one, but it was not an easy decision. You, I mean, you and I hadn't lived together in a number of years. You had never lived with me and my wife, yeah. your stepmom before, yeah. um, which, you know, I'm sure was awkward. Uh, like, okay, this is you know, the first time I'm living with my dad and someone who's not my mom. Yeah. Um, so all of that, I'm sure. Um, and it was a hard, it was a hard choice. You were tempted to bail. Yeah. Like you said, you were tempted to go. I, I'm just, I, I really go. wanted to. Yeah. And you made the tough decision to come. You made the tough decision to stay. Yeah. And, uh, speaking for Stacy and me, all I can say is that we're very grateful to God that you're with us and you know, we're like a, it's like a little, you know, little trio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what do you think? I mean, is she not, uh, amazing? She was, she was, uh, she was nervous. Uh, but this morning she said, I'm, I'm at peace. And I just reminded her that God would use her in a powerful way. So, um, it's not easy to sit up here in front of... It's not as bad as I thought, honestly. Oh, no? Do you have any... Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, uh, anything else you'd like to say to them or to anybody oh, online? Man. Or... Um, um, no. No? That's fine. You don't have to say anything. That's totally fine. I can say so much. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. What if, if there was somebody, if there was somebody, uh, we'll, we'll close with this. If there was somebody who was either in the room or watching online who was in a very similar place to the place you were mm -hmm. in when you were mm -hmm. in Orlando, mm -hmm. what would you say to them now that you're on That's the other side That's a good question. Well, it's well, like, it like when we were listening to the voicemails. I was like, oh, I just want to give that girl a hug right. and tell her, like, it's okay. Freaking yeah. talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. just talk about it honestly and, like, I'll listen to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the main point. Like, just... Yeah, being there for someone who just needs someone to listen, mm -hmm. not give advice, not tell them that it's okay, mm -hmm. not tell them why do you feel like this, but just like, just have an honest conversation and be serious, but like just be a listener. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them about God? Um, that he's real, that it's real, like it's actually real. <laughs> um, I always, I've always said it's like, it's like this big secret that I just wanna share with everyone. Mm -hmm. Like it's like this big, like guys, I found the secret. I found the secret formula. And we've talked about this before, but so many conversations we have with people, different people about God or people who may struggle with belief in God. Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, one of the reasons they struggle is because the picture they have of God mm -hmm. is something very different yeah, than the picture yeah, yeah. God gives of himself. Yeah. Specifically in the person of Jesus. Yeah. Like if we want to know people what God give looks a bad like. Rap right. For God. Uh, if we want to know what God looks like, if we want to know who God is, we we look at Jesus. Yeah. That's who he shows uh, he shows us who he is in Jesus. Um, so you were recently having a conversation with uh, a family member, one of your brothers, not Nate, um, <laughs> and uh, and he you guys were talking about God, and he was yeah. kind of like, well, why do you believe? Yeah. And I was like, because it's, it's, I, it's literally so hard to explain it. All I can say is just like, it's real. Like, <laughs> like, it's just, I can't, I can't force you to believe in it. I can't say anything that's gonna like, just click it in your head for you. Other than the fact like, and he was like, he was like, well, he's like, there's gonna be a Buddhist that's just as passionate as you. And who says that he's not right? Or there's gonna be, I'm like, yeah, but it, it's what I'm believing in. That's different than everything else. It's not just the sincerity it's of your belief. It's not the sincerity belief. of my belief. It's, it's what it's I'm believing in. It's the object of your belief. It's the object of my belief that's diff that differs from everything else. Mm -hmm. People yeah. can be more passionate about it than me, yeah. but it's what I'm believing in that's the truth that yeah. really shows what's different. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Good. Well, thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. Um, it's, not a, it's not an easy thing to do this, and I yeah. appreciate it. 
the fact that you were willing to do it. Yeah.